G'day gamers, Battle Tweety here. Today's video is about how I fit and use the Hurricane Prototype Class Battle Cruiser, affectionately known as the TGEF Terminator. Alright, let's see what this bad boy's got. So I fitted it out with six Gistam C type fuck you up medium strike cannons. Top of the line cannons for the Battle Cruiser. I don't like auto cannons. Why bring a knife to a gunfight? I like range, so that's why these bad boys are on here. I couple that with three of these MK5 Stasis Weber fires. So if anything does get too close, I can take them out with three of these bad boys. The strike cannons aren't fantastic uh, when things are up close. So I need something to help me keep those little fast ships down to a, a reasonable speed so I can hit them. I couple the strike cannons with the MK5 Infiltrator um, mainly because they handle the EM spectrum for weapons because the strike cannons handle everything else so with those two together I can take on just about any ship in the entire game. Combined that gives me a DPS of around 358 which uh, for this ship is not bad at all. On the bottom layer I've got myself one of these Acolyte medium capacitor batteries, essential. When I'm in there fighting, I need to make sure I can maintain my battery power because I've got a few things here that will suck it dry. I use the Gistam C type medium shield booster. That's the best shield booster the game can buy. It gives me a shield boost amount of 456, I guess it's megawatts or kilojoules, who knows. But it gives me an enormous amount of boost when I need it. Uh, and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. I've also got coupled with that the Posse Adaptive with Vulnerability Field. It just helps to smooth out the rough edges of some of those hits. Now I also have this little bad boy, the Rebirth Gyro Stabiliser. So it's about the second or third best gyro stabiliser that you can buy in the game. And it gives me a 8.6% additional damage when I use it. Now the top of the line gives me 9% damage bonus. The problem is, the top of the line costs me about 40 million bucks. This one here is about six. Why on earth would I pay an extra 43 million dollars, sorry, 33 million dollars for an extra 0.4%? God only knows. And under the hood, in the rig section, I've got a couple of things here. I've got the Cannon Collision Accelerator, so I get an extra 12.5% damage bonus. Then I've outfitted it with a Defense Shield amount bonus of 25%. I've also got the uh, Capacitor Safeguard prototype, which just helps reduce the amount of energy that the Shield Boost needs. Then over here on the industrial side, I've got the Capacitor Control Circuit prototype, which gives me uh, a faster recharge time for the capacitor. Then I've got extra power on the power grid and I've used two of these to give me a, an overall 15% bonus on the power grid. Why do I do that? Because these Gistam C fuck you up mediums type strike cannons use an enormous amount of power and I can just barely fit them all on combined with all the stuff I use. So you will need those extra power grid bonuses. So all up, that gives me a, uh, a decent DPS. Now there's one other thing I want to show you. When I use this little bad boy here, all of a sudden my DPS rockets up to 450. So you can see the difference that those gyro stabilizers make. They give you an awesome amount of additional power when you need it. All right, let's take this bad boy into some conflict and see how she handles. Okay, I've got a uh, T6 story mission here that I want to uh, do a little demo on on how I do these things. Now, rather than just go straight in, what I normally do is um, walk in at a distance so that I don't get stuck in the middle of all the ships that are in there. And because um, it's the first wave of this Spark of Rebellion, it's a T6 mission, I'm going to walk in at about 60 kilometres. A good distance from the fleet and uh, see what happens. And I like to have a
a top-down view of the whole battlefield rather than a big blown-up display of the ship. So just clicking that button in the middle of the uh, display down the bottom flicks between an overall view and uh, ship view. There we go. So I've come on in here. There's about, um, really, it looks like about 10 or 12 ships or so. Good distance away. So I'm going to sit here. You need to have the patience of a Dalai Lama uh, and just wait for these things to come to you because the idea is that you want the faster ships to hit first and the slower ships will lag behind and causing that to have a stretched out effect for their whole fleet so then you could, over time, start to pick them off one by one. You know, the first thing I do is put my shield hardener on just to keep um, any of those uh, good hits from inflicting too much damage. But we're at a good range, so I don't expect to get uh, anything happening just yet. All right. You can see the fleet evening itself out there. Some of the faster ships are starting to come out. I reckon these guys would be sweating um, more than a bag full of rabbits at a greyhound meet at the moment. They saw me coming. start to focus on one of these ships. Now I'm not going to hit orbit, I'm going to hit focus fire and I'll start to get my ships, uh, my guns focused on the first lead ship, the e -war. There we go. Oh, he's gone down quicker than a bride's panties on uh, wedding night. Alright, let's get the next one. Now I'm going to, uh, what I'd like to do is to keep my uh, battery uh, online I'll put the shields on just to top up the shield and I'm also going to activate the gyro stabilizer to give me a bit of extra DPS oomph. The nice thing of the GPS the DPS gyro stabilizer is that it's got about the same time as the battery so the two stay in sync so I don't have to use too much of my uh, main power. Alright he's gone down. What's the next one? Interdictor. There we go. You can start to see their fleet starting to string out a little bit, not too much, um, and I'm probably going to have to warp out at some stage. Um, but what I'm going to do, now that we're starting to get a few of them bunched, I'm going to start to hit the uh, orbit button, give myself a bit of movement because I don't want to be a sitting duck. And the battery is finished, so I'm going to stop the shield from uh, using up the power. See if we can uh, get rid of that coercer. Done. All right, what's the next crucifier? I'll set my orbit for him. Now I've got my system on auto fire, but it doesn't always get the ship that I want because it focuses on what the list of ships are on the top of the screen. But as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, it's a little bit different. So I like to just always hit focus fire myself to make sure I'm getting the right ship. Looks like we've got a uh, bit more of a shield hit, so I'll put the battery and the shield back on, plus the gyro stabiliser, a bit more DPS. These guys are going down pretty fast. Alright, second wave's just appeared. Now they're all clumped up over at the uh, mission point, which is fine, and I'm a good 60k's away. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for these bad boys to come to me. You need the uh, patience of a Dalai Lama to uh, do this. So you can see straight away, the uh, one of these elites is coming, barreling at me at a great rate of knots. So I'm going to target him first and see if we can't knock him off before he gets here. And I'll give myself a bit of added boost. I'll put the shields on just to top it up. Didn't really need to, but... I'm going to use the battery, why not? Now he's coming real fast, so uh, rather than use orbit, I'm going to click on the screen here and see if I can get myself heading the other direction so I don't get caught in the middle of this uh, little pack of wolves. Now the um, battery's finished, so I'll turn the shields off so I don't use up too much juice. 
Now he's getting pretty close, so I'm about ready to use my webifiers on him because he comes into range. And that should slow him right down and I'll get a few hits on him. Now my shields are starting to get a bit of a hit, so I'll put that on. We'll get rid of this guy and then we can store a nice 300k there. And we'll get the next uh, closest elite. So there's a few elites in this uh, wave, which uh, don't cause too much drama. This guy, as soon as he gets within 10 k's, weather fires go on and we'll slow him right down. That'll give my uh, chance for the big strike cannons to make a hit. Missed him that time, but we'll get him. Now the battery's come back online, so I'll arc up the gyro stabiliser. Right now the uh, Mark V infiltrated drone is doing all the work for me. There we go, there's a bit of a hit on him. But what I do want to do is... Um, Get my big guns to hit him and really smash him to bits. So you can see there's uh, there's three ships now that are very close to me. There's a few more that are mid range, and we'll still keep our focus on our elites because they're probably the most damaging at this stage. And I've also selected orbit as well to help me get out of this, um, or give me some distance between these guys. What that'll do is automatically try to take you out to about 26 k's from the target, which is what I want. Now in the meantime, my shields are going down a little bit. Not too much of a concern yet, but we might have to think about warping out to uh, a Stargate so we can come back in on the other side of these guys and see if we can't stretch them out a bit more. Here we go. Yeah, right about now. It's time to see if we can't warp out to a gate and come back on the other side. So I'll set the warp up and get out of range of these guys. I'll warp have to drive do that active. Before it uh, starts to get into my armor, so that I've always got armor full 100% as a contingency if uh, I get swamped. All right, it looks like I've got enough charge in the battery to. Uh, to keep going in, I'm going to go back in at uh, at about well, 60 k should do it, and we'll see where we sit. Warp drive active. I haven't quite ended up where I wanted to be, but you know it's not too bad. We can work with that. I'm going to put my uh, direction to move away from these guys, and straight away I'll focus on the closest ship. And straight away you can see I'm getting damaged, so I'm going to put on afterburners. In fact, I'm going to put on everything I've got to see if I can give myself a bit more distance and to make sure I don't lose those shields too quickly. This uh, interdictor should go down pretty quick. Shield, so I won't keep the uh, the power being sucked. He's gone. Let's get the next interdictor. starting to spread out, starting to spread out. We want to get a bit more stretched out than that, but you can see what's going on, the trend they're starting to take. And it looks like my battery's back online, so we'll switch that back on, give ourselves a shield top up and switch the gyro stable back on as well. And we'll just let that run for a while. So hopefully you can see the, um, the cruiser's been fitted out with a good amount of defence, a good amount of offence, and I can handle close-in ships if I need to as well with the weather fires. 
So I hope you've enjoyed the video, taken a few tips, and uh, I'll see you out in the battlefield.